Let's talk about getting started with a new client or a new team member. Hi, I'm Charlie, your online business manager. Getting started with a new team member or a new client can be somewhat daunting at times, particularly if you're a new uh, virtual assistant or a new business owner or a new virtual service provider, just getting out into the market and trying to work out how things work for you. Even if you're an experienced business owner and you've done this a million and one times, Getting started is one of the most important things, or the way you get started is one of the most important things you can do to ensure the success of your team. So how, how do we how do we do it? Uh, I I see questions regularly in the forums that I'm on, in the groups that I'm in. Oh, someone wants to give me this work. It's a big package of work. I don't know if I can do it. I've got some real concerns. And those concerns might not, not might not be around whether they can actually do it. It might just be, is it too much work for me? Am I set up to be able to handle this? Um, is this the right client for me? Is this the type of work I want to be handling? And they're all really good questions. And I think it's wonderful that people actually stop and think rather than saying, oh, yeah, I can do that. I think it's wonderful that they actually stop to think about, is this something that I really want to be doing? And that's a good place to start. Ask yourself, is this something I really want to be doing? Uh, is this the person, if you're talking about a new team member, is this the person that I want working with my team? Will they work with my team? Will they hence my team? Will they make my life easier or will I have more work to do when I bring them on? Okay, so let's have a look at some of the basics here and address some of those concerns as we go through. The first thing I'm going to say is agreements are important. You need to have written agreements and contracts with your customers and with your team members. Now, I know that sounds really formal and it's a bit daunting and it might put some people off, but they are really, really important. They're important for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that they will detail how you will work together. They will detail what you will deliver to your client and what your team member will deliver to you. So I am looking at this from the two points of view, right? From, from, from sitting in the middle as someone who provides services to clients and someone who uses services from subcontractors or partners. So agreements are important in that respect because you then know what you can expect. Well, sorry, what you can expect in terms of deliverables from your team members and what you can expect to deliver to your client. On your client's point of view, they know what they can expect from you. It's fantastic, right? The other thing that a, a contract or an agreement will lay out is what you will expect of the other party. So in terms of your clients, you can, your agreement should talk about uh, communications, how what happens if communications get delayed and you know, they ask you to do something and then it's a couple of weeks before they get you back the information that's needed. But it's still an urgent job as far as the client's concerned, but they've taken a couple of weeks. In that time, you're a business owner, you've got to get on and get some work in. You've got to be able to pay the bills. You've got to be able to put food on the table. So you've picked up something thinking, yep, I can get this, this little job done in this time. And then your clients come back and say, okay, here's the information. Can you get that done today? And the answer is, no, no I can't. I really can't. I, I've got too much on or I've, yeah, I've got other commitments that I, I've stepped up to while I was waiting on this information to come through. So defining sort of how that works, so, you know, if you get the information in a timely fashion, I'm using some very loose words here, agreements need to be a little tighter than that, but if you get the information in a timely fashion, you can do the work within this period of time, or you can start the work within this period of time. If it's outside of that, then you reserve the right to negotiate the start time from there. It's a good way of doing it. It also uh, sets that expectation with the client that, if, if they are a little slow, and some of them are, and some of them are great, then they also know what they can expect from you. Um, of course, an agreement will also specify what they can expect of you. And I'm not just talking about the deliverables. I'm talking about how you will communicate, uh, when invoicing will be done, uh, what will be in that invoices, whether you'll be giving time sheets, whether you'll be giving detailed reports. Now, that, those last ones that I've mentioned are really important. Some people don't do timesheets. Some people don't think they need to give a detailed report. And then they get into a piece of work with 
uh, a client and the client says, okay, so can I have your report for the week, please? And they're like, I don't have one. I don't do those. But if you haven't said you don't give reports or if you have said you give reports, more importantly, say you give reports if you don't, you can say, no, I'm sorry, I don't do that. Is that something you want because we need to negotiate my time to do that? Because re making reports, delivering reports can be a timely thing, a uh, time-consuming thing, not a timely thing. So that's how you can work with your clients. The same also occurs on the other side with your subcontractors and your partners. Are you expecting them to give you reports? Are you expecting them to give you, I'm going to use the terms, after action reports uh, on incidents? What do you expect them to tell you when they close off a job for you or when they complete a package of work? Do you need their timesheets on a weekly basis? Do you need them to log into your uh, system and actually start recording the time so you can see how much time is going up against a package of work or a piece of work so you can manage your budget and you can say, hang on, this looks like it's getting a bit out of hand. Why is the, why is my time budget on this going up? That's, yeah, that's a really important thing too. So again, it's about how you work with your team. What do you expect of them? What can they expect of you? notice that I always put in there that I say what they can expect of you because you are party to this. This isn't just all about you. This is about the team working successfully together. Now, if all goes well, you should never have to refer to your agreement. It should just sit there in the background as, as something that you've done. Uh, it's set the right tone for everything and you don't never need it again. When you need it, if you need it, that's when it becomes important that you actually went through the process of getting it done. So make sure that you have an agreement. Uh, and if you're not sure, make sure that that agreement has been checked by a, a legal person, a, a, a lawyer or someone who is uh, versed in creating uh, agreements uh, for, for commercial ent enterprises. So Let's put the agreement to the side now because we shouldn't need that again, right? It should just be there off onto the side knowing that this is how we're going to work together. How do you actually get started? Uh, and I, I preface this a little at the front of, of this podcast, talking about someone comes in and says it's a big package of work and I just don't know if I can do it. I don't think that you should be taking on big packages of work with a new client or a new subcontractor. Big packages of work, big big projects are things that should be done when you know that the team you've put together can work together and works together effectively. So how do you address it? It's actually really simple. Take that big package of work, find one thing, one thing that can make a difference to your client, one thing that can make a difference to you and get your you do that for your client or you get your subcontractor to do that for you. One small thing. If it's a couple of hours worth of work, if it's five hours worth of work, if it's a week's worth of work, if it's a small package, it's manageable. You get a feel for how you all work together. You get a feel for how communications will flow, whether this has been set up correctly, whether there needs to be tweaks made before you get into doing ongoing and long-term or large packages of work. And at the end of that, your client can say, yeah, this is working really well for me. I can see how this is going to make a difference. It's a proof of concept for your client. I can see how this is going to make a difference for me. And for yourself, you know whether that subcontractor can actually step up and deliver what they've told you they can deliver, whether they're going to communicate with you in a uh, timely and effective and efficient manner. For me, because I work with people all around the world, I also under, I also learn whether their time zones, even though they say they can work within my time zone, whether their time zone and the way they work works the way I need it to. I have had cases where people have said, yes, yes, I'm in a different time zone to you, but I'm used to working in your time zone. I will do it. And I've gone, okay, great. And I've sent off a, a message and it's been... 24 hours to get a very quick response from them because no they don't work in my time zone they really don't or to them working in my time zone means that they start early in my morning and finish not so early in my morning and then they're gone for the rest of the day that doesn't 
often work for me. I need people to be on deck in my business hours, not outside of my business hours. So that's an important thing as well. So start small. Find one piece of work you can do out of the whole package. And if you can't break that package up, find a small project you can work on together and do that. Then you build it up. Do, okay, so we've done this piece of work. Now let's do the next piece of work. So the example I think give you with that is I'm often I, I'm often approached to help fix up web, web, websites. My website's not working. I've got all these changes I want to make and this, this, this and this. And I'm like, okay, great. Yes, I would love to work with you. Yes, I believe I can help you. I, from this conversation, it sounds like we're going to get on really well together. How about I take this one little thing that you've mentioned um, or this one smaller thing that you've mentioned that's going to make a big difference to you and just do that. And then once I've done that, we'll understand a lot more about how things are. I'll understand a lot more about your setup. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll look at the rest of the pieces of work and package them down so that we can say, here's a, here's a milestone, here's something we can do, here's an achievement goal and move forward. So then build it up. Uh, and eventually you'll get to a point where it's just natural to work with this client. The client will come to you and say, hey, here's some pieces of work. Yep, I know how you work. I know that you will get to this. Here's my important things. These are the things that I need you to do in the very short term. I need these by these dates. If you can't get them done, let me know because maybe they'll go find someone else. Maybe they can skip it. Or in my case where I get those sorts of things, it's like, okay, I know that if you're telling me that you need this by this date or in this time frame, you need it. So I will rearrange my stuff around getting that done or I'll go and get myself some help to get some of the other things done or get that piece of work done. So it works really well. Um, that then comes back to check in regularly with your team members. Uh, that's and your team includes your client and your subcontractors and your partners check in regularly do regular follow-ups with them they don't have to be formal it can be a, a, a like I said I use discord as part of my team messaging uh, system I, I might be a, a discord message to my team member hey how you doing good to see good to hear from you how's life going over there what 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 can we do um is there anything i need to be aware of how is it for you is there anything you need to raise with me uh with my clients if they're on discord i do the same thing uh, it might be that we text message it might be that I pick up, oh my goodness, I pick up the phone and make a phone call and speak to them. How, what, a, what a novel idea. But we do check in regularly. Uh, not only does that build and engender trust, uh, it does actually give you some really valuable feedback that you can then put into your own planning. Uh, in terms of good business management and just you know your general stuff, it also says to your client that you are focused on them and you haven't forgotten about them and you're not so busy doing work for other people that you've forgotten about them. Uh, the final thing that I'm going to add to that, now you notice I stuttered a little there, it's be open to feedback, good and bad. Now I use the term feedback and not criticism. Um, criticism can be harsh. I, I prefer either constructive criticism as a term or feedback, good or bad. You need to know where things aren't working and if those things that aren't working is we never hear from you then that's something you need to take on now i try not to work in absolutes but it is often something you'll get that i never hear from you i pay you this money and i never hear from you is the work getting done yeah it is but the client or the team member isn't feeling that obviously isn't feeling sorry it would appear that the client isn't feeling that they're getting the, the value for money for what they're doing. Um, it's the, the subcontractor isn't feeling like you're actually giving them enough attention to do what they want. Now, it might be that that type of feedback is also used by yourself to say, am I in the right type of business here? Is this the right type of work for me? Because if your answer is, I don't think I need to be giving you any more than I'm giving you. I think I'm doing a good job here. Then your next question really should be, is this the right work for me? Am I doing the right type of thing for my business and for myself? 
have I got the right people working for me to make my life easier? Because remember, we take on subcontractors, we work with partners to make our life easier. We don't want to complicate our lives anymore by doing that. So be open to the feedback. When you get bad feedback or negative feedback or constructive feedback, thank them for it. Or it, it, it's one of the hardest things in life I ever learned to do. But that was to say, thank you for that feedback. Thank you for being honest enough to give me that feedback. I will go and think about it. I don't respond. Uh, mm, I've got to be careful. I try not to respond to that immediately. The thing with negative feedback or constructive feedback is that it can land quite personally for you. It can be quite hurtful at times, particularly if you're in a very busy period, uh, if you're in a slightly low period in terms of um, uh, personality, uh, mood, maybe, I don't know, maybe the kids dropped the cereal box on the ground this morning that we kept to spend the morning picking up the cereal because the kids have got to go to school and you've got the cereal all over the ground. I mean, I'm sure we've all been there. Maybe the dog has just drug in your favourite rose tree from the garden because they've dug it up and they've wanted to show you how clever they are and then you get someone come back and hit you with, oh, I don't think you're doing a good job. They might not be saying that, but that's how it lands on you. So when I get that type of feedback, I really try to walk away for a bit, let it sit, uh, go and get myself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, um, go for a walk in the sun, and then come back and read it and divorce myself from the emotions that, that are tied up with it. Uh, then I tend to write out my response, write some notes on it, write my response to it, run it by someone I trust to make sure that I've read the feedback in uh, the correct manner and I'm not assigning emotion to it that wasn't there to begin with. And then I go back and address it with the client or the team member. I'm not perfect at that. I, it, it's This is something that has challenged me my entire life and I have to work at it every time. So if you're finding that difficult, yeah, where there's so many of us in that boat but try to do that try not to respond to that straight away when you get good feedback again thank them for the good feedback um and and use that as something that that buoys you through everything else because yeah what we do is not easy working and working with others and working remotely and having to create our teams is not an easy thing and as much as we might love it there are the bad times as well as the good times so there you go there's some things that you can try make sure you have an agreement in place before you get started uh, that agreement should detail how you work together what you expect from the other members other parties to the agreement and what they can expect from you that agreement should then go get put to the side and never refer to. But if you need to refer to it, it's there. Then start small. Take a small piece of work, deliver it, make sure that you've got all the things and the processes in place and that this is a this piece, this type of work, this client and these these subcontractors are good fits for you. Build it up, check in regularly and be open to feedback when it comes through. Okay, so um, I'd love to know your own experiences in this regard. Where are your challenges? What have you found works really well for you? Um, did you have some successes? Have you had some real failures that you think you could share with us? I'd love to hear about them. I really would. And also remember, please like this video, subscribe to our channels, and ring the notification bell so that you get notified when I drop more content. Have a good week, guys. Bye-bye.